Uh, Kihir, look, I wish to, uh, to read uh, the motion into the record um, that Fianna Fáil is proposing here this evening. To Dáil Éireann notes, the latest mortgage arrears statistics published by the Central Bank showing a further increase in the number of arrears cases with 142,118 family home mortgages uh, in arrears at 31 March 2013. As a result of various initiatives by government and the Central Bank, the balance of power has shifted firmly in favour of the banks and against the distressed mortgage holder. The recent publication by the Central Bank of the Revised Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears, the imminent enactment of the Land and Conveyancing Law Reform uh, Bill 2013, which inter alia nullifies the Dunn judgment, the number of family home mortgages in arrears of greater than 12 months has increased significantly and now stands at over 54,000. Comments from senior officials in the Department of Finance and the Central Bank predicting a significant increase uh, in the level of home repossessions. The banks hold an effective veto on any proposed arrangement uh, involving the mortgage under the new insolvency service. Under the Mortgage Arrears Targets Programme, the banks are not yet required to achieve any targets for reaching agreement with borrowers. The banks decide on the nature of the sustainable solution to be offered to the borrower. The sustainable solution can involve interest only, putting the borrower into the insolvency process or the repossession uh, of the property by way of a court order. The Dáil Éireann recognises the widespread concern among distressed borrowers of imminent legal action by banks to initiate repossession proceedings. The evidence from advocacy groups and from direct contact with mortgage holders that banks are now take, taking a more hardline approach with those in mortgage arrears. The Dáil Éireann calls for the Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears to be revised to enshrine the following provisions. A clear definition of what constitutes an unsustainable mortgage following a process involving representatives of both borrowers and lenders. An entitlement to a minimum protected level of income for a borrower entering an arrangement with their bank. Reinstatement of a maximum number of successful contacts that a bank is allowed to have with a mortgage holder in any calendar month. In recognition of the difficulty with placing a value on a tracker mortgage, where a borrower is faced with an offer which involves surrendering their tracker mortgage, a requirement that a third party verify if the offer from the bank is in their best interests. Reinstatement of the 12-month moratorium on repossession proceedings for mortgage holders who have entered the mortgage arrears resolution process. The central bank to require that banks report all calls with borrowers and that these can be stored so that central bank staff can access them randomly to check them for any incidents of harassment or following a specific complaint. An obligation on a bank seeking an order for repossession to first obtain written confirmation from the central bank that, that it has exhausted every other course of action available to keep a family in their home. An obligation on a bank seeking to classify a mortgage holder as uncooperative and move for immediate repossession to obtain confirmation from the central bank uh, that uh, the mortgage holder can be properly classified as uncooperative. And finally, the Dáil Éireann further calls for the regulation of debt collection agencies, uh, in particular where they are engaged by banks in respect of customers in mortgage arrears. Okay, here, look, this uh, indeed is the second time uh, in six months that we have tabled a private member's motion relating to the mortgage crisis, which is hitting every community uh, across the length and breadth of the country. Despite promises at the time from government ministers that decisive action was being taken to confront the problem head on, we now see the situation uh, is actually getting worse. In the intervening period, the numbers of arrears cases has continued to increase while the number of genuinely sustainable solutions put in place by the banks has been little short of abysmal. Borrowers are now being hit by a triple whammy in the form of the Land and Conveyancing Law Reform Bill, which will make home repossessions easier, the Mortgage Arrears Resolution Targets Programme, which incredibly allows the banks themselves to define what is a sustainable solution, and now the revised Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears, which unravels vital protections uh, for homeowners. And we now have a situation here, look, where uh, about 70,000 uh, families uh, are no longer protected from uh, repossession proceedings being uh, undertaken immediately by the banks. We have over 54,000 uh, family home mortgages in arrears now of one year or more. Uh, and if you look pro rata uh, at those that are in arrears between six and 12 months, approximately 16,000 of those can be assumed to be in arrears of eight months or more. And when you add that to the 54, you have about 70,000 families now uh, that are completely at the mercy of the banks uh, in relation to possible repossession proceedings.
Um, I listened to the interview with Governor Honaghan on the radio at the weekend, and while he didn't repeat the language that he used in February when he said the central bank officials were tearing their hair out in frustration at the lack of progress being made in tackling this crisis, it was clear from his comments and indeed other media reports that the banks have not stepped up to the plate. In that context, it is inexplicable that the central bank themselves would sign off on a revised code which strips the borrower of some of the remaining protections that they had. As I said previously, the banks have not held off repossessing family homes to date out of any sense of economic altruism, social solidarity, or out of recognition of the costs they have inflicted on the taxpayer, but quite simply because their hands have been tied by the done judgment uh, and the terms of the previous code of conduct on mortgage arrears. On Friday of this week, the Shannon is likely to pass the bill which will remove the loophole uh, which limited repossession actions uh, while the code of conduct will in effect let the banks off the leash to pursue borrowers in cases where the bank deems the mortgage to be unsustainable. And it is worth noting what the code itself says in this regard. Where a bank writes to a borrower to advise them that their loan is unsustainable, quote, legal proceedings may commence uh, three months from the date the letter is issued or eight months from the date the arrears arose, whichever date is later, and that irrespective of how the property is repossessed and disposed of, the borrower will remain liable for the outstanding debt, including any accrued interest, charges, legal selling and other related costs, uh, if this is the case. End quote. This is a significant weakening by any measure of the protection which previously existed for borrowers. Our motion requests that the code be revised to reincorporate the 12-month moratorium before repossession actions are allowed to commence. In addition, it puts forward what I think is a very reasonable suggestion that before a repossession order is granted by the courts, uh, that the bank be required to obtain from the central bank as regulator written confirmation that it has in fact exhausted all viable alternative options to repossession. Widespread home repossession is an almost unknown phenomenon to us uh, in Ireland, but the UK went through a disastrous period of social upheaval in the early 1990s as a consequence of thousands of families being put out of their home. Despite arrears of greater than six months peaking at 3.5% in 1992, a level far below what we are experiencing in Ireland, 200,000 homes were repossessed in the period 1990 to 1992. The social and economic effects of the failed policies that led to this situation uh, were still being felt many years later. Gihirak, we have all come across some extraordinary lending decisions where mortgages were granted uh, that should never have seen the light of day. And I want to share one with this House uh, tonight. And this one relates to a buy-to-let mortgage where the lending decision by the bank simply beggars belief. This was a lending decision by a main bank in Ireland, and it relates to a married couple who, pretty much at the height of the boom, uh, bought an investment property. The husband was then uh, 61 years of age and was a retiring public servant and was due to receive a lump sum of around €100,000. His wife was a housewife and didn't work outside the home. They decided to buy a house as their pension, with a view to selling it on a short few years later. The house cost around €300,000. The couple received a 14-year mortgage of €196,000. That was a 14-year mortgage when the sole income earner was already retired and aged 61. The mortgage, would, the mortgage would take the husband up to the age of 75. The couple put the €100,000 lump sum uh, with the mortgage and bought an investment property for €300,000. The original loan agreement provided that the loan would be on interest only for seven years and for the remaining seven years the couple would pay about €2,700 per month to the bank, a level of repayment that was simply never going to be possible. Now, of course, neither the couple concerned nor the bank ever expected that the property would be held for that length of time. But to grant a 14-year mortgage uh, to uh, a 61-year-old man and to put it on uh, seven years interest only on the basis of a modest public sector pension uh, simply is beyond belief. And when the loan got into difficulty uh, after the interest only period expired uh, around 2012, the bank's solution uh, for the couple was for them to pay €1,000 per month for a 12-month period and then for them to clear uh, the remaining amount of the loan, including arrears, uh, in the six years that were left within the, so the, the lifetime of the mortgage agreement. And I highlight that case, Cahir, look, just to, to make the point and underline it, 
uh, emphatically, that that is the level of unrealism that we are dealing with. It highlights, one, the level of rec recklessness in the original lending decision, and it highlights then uh, the complete detachment of the bank when it came in recent times to trying to agree uh, a proper solution to that particular mortgage. Now, of course, I acknowledge that in this case, the couple concerned made a very unwise, uh, even a foolish investment decision, and they have paid an extremely high price for that decision. But the bank's role in this case, and indeed many, many thousands of other cases, has been truly extraordinary. Uh, that couple is currently negotiating with the bank, and I'm sure the property will be either voluntarily surrendered, sold, or perhaps repossessed. And the question in that case uh, will be uh, what will happen to the shortfall, which I expect to be probably 60 to 70,000 euro. The couple in question now fear uh, that their own family home uh, may well be vulnerable. I know that every deputy in this House, Cahir, has examples of appalling behaviour by banks in relation to original lending decisions and then in relation to the efforts uh, to put in place sustainable solutions. But it begs the question, why are we as a state giving them even more power when they haven't demonstrated any willingness or capacity to seek to resolve the mortgage arrears crisis? When Bill Clinton addressed the Global Irish Network in Dublin Castle in October 2011, he identified the mortgage crisis as the number one economic challenge facing Ireland. He was absolutely correct in his view. But most of the attendees that day would surely not have believed that almost two years on from that event, we would have seen little more than window dressing measures from the government and the banks. The Taoiseach said in this House this very afternoon that house repossessions have to be the last resort. If he truly believes that, then he will accept the proposals we are putting forward that the banks be required to obtain verification independently that they were left with no other course of action uh, before they are facilitated by the courts. And I have to say that my experience of dealing with individual cases at this point in time is that the repossession of the family home uh, is no longer the option of last resort. It is now becoming uh, the preferred solution of many banks. Uh, I have dealt with cases where people uh, had not even yet fallen into arrears, for example. People who anticipated that they were going to uh, come into financial difficulty over the period ahead through loss of employment, or in one case because uh, the wife was actually going to give birth. And they went to the bank and they sought to anticipate a problem down the road. And the bank's solution to them at the time, when they put all their cards on the table, was actually, no, we think you can continue to fully repay that mortgage, uh, and if you can't, then we want the keys back or we're going to initiate legal proceedings. That is what is actually happening on the ground. Uh, repossession is no longer uh, the last resort for the banks. And that is my concern, that all of the powers that have been given to the banks through the legislation on the Dunn Judgment, the Mortgage Arrears Targets Programme, uh, the revised Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears, have all firmly shifted that delicate balance of power between borrowers and lenders, and given the banks uh, an even stronger hand now uh, to deal with borrowers who are already trying to live with the daily reality and the financial distress that having uh, a mortgage in arrears brings with it. How much time is left? Yeah, you. A minute and a half. A minute Definitely. and a half. Um, the statistic in relation to uh, the number of houses that are now in line for possible repossession is most striking when you consider the latest statistics from the central bank, that we have only had 144 split mortgage solutions put in place. That represents 0.1% of family home mortgages in arrears and is a shocking indictment of the failure of the banks to face up to the problem. Now, government ministers consistently say that we have had 80,000 mortgages restructured in Ireland. Well, in my opinion, that is a distortion of the reality. When you look at the breakdown of that, 26,000 mortgages put on interest only, 17,000 on reduced payment greater than interest only, 7,000 where the payments were less than interest only, 2,500 payment moratoriums, then you get the sense very quickly that what has been done to date uh, does not re represent a genuine and sustainable restructuring of the mortgage in question. Uh, going back as far as the autumn of 2011, Cahir, look, uh, we put forward, uh, uh, in our view, radical solutions which involve uh, giving the power to an independent office, which could sit within the personal and sovereignty service, and giving it the, the power to make binding decisions, decisions that would be binding on both the borrower uh, and the lender in relation to what is a fair uh, and equitable outcome in the case of individual mortgage arrears. Uh, 